is creeping along to 5.07 in the evening with Lynn, Ayman and Kelvin. And first up on our show, it is Pop It Pop It Life today, focusing on whether you have DIY skills. In other words, uh, so we're not necessarily talking about crafting, um, mm. but repairing. Do you repair things on your own? Do you send it to the shop? Do you call someone to come into your home? We're asking because the European Union has recently come up with new legislation that will require electronic products such as fridges, washing machines and TVs to be made easier to repair with, I guess, the unspoken thing being that previously they were not. So under the EU's Eco Design Directive, manufacturers have to make sure their products are easy to dismantle and that spare parts are available for professional repairers for as long as 10 years after the product is sold. So this helps make sure that products last longer because you can get the spare parts and have it fixed and maybe even fix it yourself if you know what you're doing. Ugo Valauri from the Right to Repair campaign in Europe said this is an important step in the right direction. Next step will be to make sure uh, to make spare parts and repair manuals available to all, not just professional repairers. But how many of us actually know how to repair things when they're broken? So our team went to ask this question to the public and here's what we got. Yes, I do. For example, like I change the light bulbs myself. I would repair my own toilet, wiring applications and all. So it's quite easy though. Only the easier ones. Something like a pen, chair or light bulb. Simple stuff where you just need some screwdrivers. I do repair my PS3 and, and my PS4 and the controllers. I have like a set of screwdrivers where I dismantle my console and I just clean it, change the chips, test it out. No, I do not. The closest I ever get to repairing anything is like awkwardly MacGyvering, like when bag straps break and stuff like that but not actual appliances i've repaired a washing machine before and then of course like you have the option to get it fixed by warranty but that will probably take like weeks for the guy to come and you can't wash clothes in the meantime okay i'm kind of impressed by the Mm. last one that we had Mm -hmm. there washing machine so for people who don't fix their own items we asked them then you know what are your solutions I tried to look for a repairman online to get them to come to my house to fix it. I would definitely call a handyman because that's his job and I would not do something that is not my job because I might make it worse. I Google it, I guess. I try to see if there is a way to fix it by myself, but most of the time I would just call a repairman, again, someone I found on the internet or something. And we also asked if they were keen on learning skills that would make them more handy. Yes, I would love to. Then at least that would save a lot of costs as well. Definitely, I guess it would save me time and money so I can handle my own things like a responsible human being. I mean, in terms of um, practical skills, things like, you know, even sewing or learning how to change a tire or, you know, things like that were not things that were ever at all in any form of education given to me. And I would love to learn because that's just life skills. So I guess our question to you today is, do you fix things yourself? Do you know how? Have you ever kind of gone out to seek that knowledge? If you don't, you can call us at double seven double three two nine hundred, WhatsApp 018-789-8899 and tweet us at BFM Radio. So um, I am not the handiest person. Um, I, I know how to do a few things. Uh, Kamahira and Hidop was not a strength <laughs> when I was in school. Um, but now as an adult, I think I can logic some things. I think that I can internet some things. Um, It's all very theoretical, but yeah, some of it's pretty logical. I do think, however, that there are some specific bits of the house that I might get a bit too squicked out to bother with. I, I, I know that makes me sound like a bit of a priss, but that's where I stand. I can I can name some of the components in a CPU and only recently I found out what some of the things in my car bonnet does but otherwise I wouldn't dare touch these things because I'm afraid I might make it worse although it would be a good thing to know like maybe I can like do my own servicing on my car I can save some money I just have two very simple rules one will I die trying to fix it <laughs> and the other one is how desperate am I uh, in, in need of this thing that I have to repair. So if it's, let's say, if it's just a bag that I need to use immediately, okay, you know, some simple tape would do. Or if uh, if it's a simple fix that's just required, I can just look that up and fix it. But if it's something a bit more complex, I really wouldn't usually touch things that, um, like, let's say, trying to fix a light switch, I wouldn't try to attempt that because I'm not sure... Mm-hmm. And I feel like the risks there are way too much. So I think this is tied to a number of different things, right? Like your willingness to DIY. Part of it is just how much it's baked into how you were raised. Because for a lot of people, it's just you never throw stuff out until up and until you just can't repair it anymore. Like it's on its last legs, it's threadbare. That's when you toss. But other than that, you just never, ever do it. You keep it. um, And when I look at, I guess, where we are right now, where you have um, updates available for almost anything, um, 
um, and people change phones even when they don't have to, for example. I don't know if that's still something that we, um, and I guess we here meaning your average middle class Malaysian, you know, somebody who's relatively more privileged, whether we still have that or whether we're just more willing to, eh, you know, it's broken. Well, I'll take a look closer at our smartphones, right? I think for the longest time, a lot of people have asked for the ability to be able to either fix the phone themselves or to be able to send it to unassociated, unaffiliated repair shops. Because the problem was that sometimes uh, the risk was if you had sent it to another place that, say, wasn't affiliated with Apple, uh, you would lose your warranty and they would say, well, the repair of your, the quality of repair isn't up to par and we can't do anything at the official Apple stores. So that is you know, anti-consumer, right? Because you want to be able to have as many options open to you as possible to be able to fix your phone. Although um, I was also thinking while we're talking about smartphones and such about the advent of DIY uh, blogs, DIY yeah. vlogs, DIY channels on the internet. Because I think now if you need information, just like with almost anything else, you can find it online. And that is as true as anything when it comes to actually fixing stuff yourself. They're really detailed. Yeah. Um, they go through everything. They even have, I think, you can probably find specific models. So it's not tough to learn. I think the question there then is also this issue of time. Yeah. Whether you consider it more time-consuming to actually fix it or whether you consider it more time consuming to wait for somebody who will finally be free to show up at your house and do it and also like whether you can even trust the things that you read or see on the internet because sometimes um uh, you may understand it differently because i remember last time uh, i won't gonna, i'm not going to admit that it was quite recently but um, my car battery died and i checked on youtube how to like you know kickstart it i'm so ashamed of this so i i watched youtube um, so i okay so give instructions so i called my friend to to help and he did it in a completely different way hmm. And it still worked. So I was like, so now I'm still confused, like how to kickstart a car battery. So again, we are Popet Popet King. Oh, that's a hard one. Popet Popet King. Oh, I stumbled again. Not going <laughs> to... I'm not going to try. We're talking about. We're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about doing it yourself today. Do you fix stuff in your own home? Um, and for a um, for someone who asked. The something that's broken at home, is it the marriage? It is not. Um, we have You can other also shows. try to DIY that, honestly. You could, yes. But we have other shows for that. Today, however, we are talking about things literally like the fridge. Um, when something's broken in your house, what do you do? Do you fix it? Do you call someone to fix it? Do you buy a new one? Are you... Do you have that DIY spirit? That's what we want to know. You can call us at 7733-2900, WhatsApp 018-789-8899, and tweet us at BFM Radio. BFM 89.9. The Business Station. It's 5.15 in the evening with Lynn, Ayman and Kelvin. And we're talking today about DIY, DIY fixing, DIY fixes at home. That's what we're talking about. And that's coming through particularly because the European Union has come up with new legislation that's going to require electronic products. We're talking about your fridges, your TVs to be made easier to repair. So in other words, they should be more understandable. The spare parts should be available. But then we are also talking about the willingness to mm. actually do the fixes. So we have a poll running right now um, on our Twitter feed. That's at PFM Radio. And the question is, when something's broken in your house, what do you do? 49% are saying, fix it myself. 29% say, call someone to fix it. And 22% are saying, buy a new one. So pretty much half would fix it themselves. And that is quite a good number, right? Because I tend to lean more towards if I can... And this is unfortunately a bit um, atas of me. If I can throw money at a problem, I would. <laughs> I, but I don't always have that money, so I'm trying to think of different ways to fix things. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you, Kelvin, for that dose of reality. Um, in the meantime, we have on the line with us Johnson Lam, who is the founder of Kaki Repair, a movement and platform where people are encouraged to fix their items instead of throwing them away. Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. So from what you've observed, do many Malaysians have the habit of repairing their old items? Okay, from the observation in general, it's actually no. Yeah, I think it is because these days, right, things are so easy to just throw and buy a new one uh, rather than just sending to fix. So that's why uh, maybe that's why people don't pick up the habit of repairing. And where does one pick up DIY skills? Because we have Kamaharan Hidop in schools, uh, but sometimes it feels like it's difficult to translate into you know, real life application. 
Ah, uh, yes, correct. However, actually, I think maybe those days when we have Kamara Hidup, right, people seems to uh, get overly excited to build projects and stuff like that, but forgot about the fundamental skills. Because in Kamara Hidup, actually, we, we sort of like learn the basic fundamental of using the tools or building something. And the same skill set is the one that you can use to diagnose and repair stuff. But anyway, to answer the question, these days, there's a lot of ways, uh, especially with online these days, uh, YouTube, in the websites, for example, like Instructables and iFixit, you can find a lot of um, guides to fix stuff. And locally, we also have community events, uh, classes in makerspaces on how to repair stuff, and also community movements such as Kaki Repair. And speaking of the internet, how much can we trust these online sources when it comes to fixing things? Ah, yeah, so for this question, uh, it's, a, it's a yes and no answer. Uh, as in like, yes, we sort of like can trust most of it. But however, we do have to make sure that number one is also applicable to what we are trying to fix. Because although, for example, let's say an iron that we're trying to fix, right? Irons, so many different models outside. And uh, sometimes the one that is posted and then the steps to fix it might be different from what we have. So that's the other thing. Uh, and also, I mean, nowadays online videos, right? A lot of these uh, influencers and all, they try to create video just that it goes viral. So it might look good that, oh, this can be such a good tip or hack or fix. However, it doesn't really work. So, um, yeah, I have to take it with a pinch of salt or try it yourself. Lah. But basically, the, the basic steps and you know, know-how, it's mostly available and can be trusted online. You know, I, I find that there might also be a little bit of a level of apprehension. And I think we've also talked a bit about it uh, because there's worries about safety. There are worries about making things worse. Um, do you find that this apprehension exists? Yes, it's a very, very big yes. Because uh, I mean, even in like uh, repair sessions and in classes that, that we are involved with, we always ask people about their opinion on this as well. And usually they come back with three big excuses uh, of why they don't repair. Uh, number one, they say they have no space to repair. Second is no proper tools to do the repair. And the third one is actually no skills to repair. Of course, all these things is very easy to overcome. It's like either you can check it online, go to some place to, to repair it, or just, you know, get some cheap tools. Um, at the same time, yeah, because a lot of people have this myth about electricity that you shouldn't touch electricity, right? Um, a lot of our electronic appliances are actually very, very low electricity current. It's just like touching... Um, a double A battery, you won't get electrocuted, right? So we shouldn't be afraid to try. And besides, we should just have that mindset that number one, the item is already spoiled anyway, and you're going to throw away anyway. So why not just try to take it apart and see what's inside it and then take your time to Google it or ask someone and just try to diagnose and repair. There's no harm rather than just throwing it away. I guess there's also often the perception that many appliances today are not built to last, you know, right after the warranty runs out. It's, you know, more or less near the end of the lifetime for your appliance. Is that perception accurate in your opinion? Uh, yeah, sadly, in the developing world, this is quite uh, true from both ends, from the consumer end and also from the manufacturer's end. Because end of the day, the manufacturers will always try to push you new products because that's how they make money and they sustain. Second, they also try to make the product unrepairable. Irreparable, okay, what's the word for it? Yeah, can't be repaired, right? Because if people can prolong the, the lifespan of the items, then they are, they're gonna be in trouble because people won't buy new stuff. Yeah, and, and from the consumer perspective, because sometimes nowadays things are so cheap, uh, especially those small electronic items, which is first of all, it's already quite hard to open up to repair. Second, it's so much easier to just throw away and buy a new one. So that's why people are like, you know, why not, why not just get a new one? 
in other countries, like in Europe, for example, there's a growing movement where people are calling for the right to repair. And this is uh, targeted especially at manufacturers and they're asking for things to be built to last longer and uh, more repairable. Do you think that this is something that might take hold in Malaysia as well? Or does it require maybe a, a culture of wanting to fix your own things? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. So usually this right to repair and uh, all this, right, is more popular over in like first world countries because end of the day, everything is quite stable and people wants to want to get more out of things and also want to enrich their life with education. Over here in Malaysia, yes, it's picking up, especially along the line with, um, you know, all the zero waste um, initiative and movement. Uh, at the same time, the right to repair should be available worldwide because end of the day, uh, number one, when a consumer purchase an item, we should have the right to know, uh, number one, what's inside the item. Number two, at least uh, diagnosing it or replacement of certain parts. Because let's say um, from a manufacturer's perspective, some of the manufacturers thought that, okay, if you give them right to repair, then people will not buy new things from them. However, they can change their mindset to be like, what if they provide spare parts and tools and all that to, uh, for sale as well? In that case, yes, they can continue selling stuff and be sustainable. At the same time, consumers also able to, you know, uh, repair and prolong the lifespan of the particular item and also learn something as well. And that sounds like a win-win for everyone. Yes, yes. And of course, the other thing, it all boils, boils down to the community or the person themselves. Because um, the question now is, how many people out there willing to just learn or diagnose what's going on and just fix it, right? As simple as, you know, let's, let's talk about something big, which is actually quite easy to maintain, okay? Your car, right? Uh, these days, I mean, those days, people will always check on your tire pressure and your oil level and the water level. But these days, a lot of people just hope that the workshop will check it or their periodic services will do it, right? So you have to start from the person themselves to want to know about the things that you have and want to take care, want to repair or prolong its life. So... If people are listening to this and maybe, like me, feeling a bit ashamed, <laughs> like they should be doing more, how do you think people can get started if they're keen on becoming more handy? Oh, okay. Right at home or in the office, anytime, even now. Um, so what they do is, I mean, anything that goes wrong, I think the first thing they can do is just change the mindset of, instead of trying to just get others to solve the problem or throw it away and buy a new one, why not try to be curious to know what's actually wrong, okay? That should be the first step. Second, then you start worrying about tools, but tools is actually usually as simple as just a normal screwdriver set. Uh, I think any, everyone at home should just keep uh, one test pan, which is that flat screwdriver thingy. Yeah, with that alone, you can actually do a lot of diagnosing and repairing. And then of course, after you can learn how to you know diagnose or open up some stuff to to see what's happening then uh, have the second skill which is the researching skill just go on online go to google type in uh, the problems that you have you can actually find resources there and yeah if you want to be slightly closer to home you can go to community uh, facebook groups such as like kaki repair you snap a picture you post it up there a lot of people will come back with their suggestions on how to diagnose and how to repair that. Yeah, with that alone, I think it's a very, very good start. And yeah, people will be encouraged and inspired, especially when they have successfully repaired one or two star uh, items. And then from there, yeah, keep going on. And one last question before you go, Johnson. When is it time to call in the experts? <laughs> okay, uh, this one will be, I think, more to the person as well. If you re if you think that you don't have the con confidence to move on to the next step, yeah, that's when you reach out, okay? Uh, it doesn't need to be an expert. It just needs to be another person with a little bit more experience that, yeah, you'll be careful and try to uh, work it out. <laughs> 
Yeah. The most important thing here is, of course, safety, especially if you're working with heavy machineries, okay, if you're trying to repair that, or uh, elect uh, electrical appliances, those that plug in to the, to the electrical plug at home. Yeah. Make sure that it's always unplugged. Make sure that it has not been turned on for quite, quite some time before you start taking them apart to diagnose it. Johnson, thank you so much for speaking with us today. That was Johnson Lam, founder of Kaki Repair. You can find out more about them on their Facebook page. Just search uh, Kaki Repair by Kaki DIY. And um, are you a Kaki Repair? Are you somebody who does that? Or are you somebody who, um, like Kelvin, just kind of opens their wallet and throws <laughs> bunches of money at the problem? Oh, throwing is lovely. Throw money at a problem and then you can throw the item out as well. This is horrendous. It's horrible. <laughs> Don't follow me. It's uh, waste generating. I'm trying to change my lifestyle. So we've been asking you for your thoughts and we've gotten um, a number of rather lovely messages, actually, which we will get to after this. But just to update you, in case you were wondering, uh, we have a poll running up on Twitter where we're asking when something's broken in your house, what do you do? Um, earlier, it stood at 49% saying fix it myself. It's gone up to 53 So I think it's a pretty, hmm. yeah, it's a pretty strong majority because 29% are saying I'd call someone to fix it and 19% are team Kelvin Yee, buy a new one. <laughs> no, uh, it's the 29% and the 19% which I would do. So I'm almost half of that. Look at you just trying to gain a... Try I'm trying to, to salvage my, <laughs> my uh, name here. I see. Okay. Um, so tell us where you stand on this. You know, do you fix stuff yourself? Uh, do you call somebody? What do you do? Are you handy around the home? Call us at double seven double three two nine hundred to tell us. You can WhatsApp 018-789-8899 and tweet us at BFM Radio. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my, bfm89.9, the business station.